All right, take your Bibles, go to the book of John, chapter number four. I just wanted to give a quick devotional thought here for you from the book of uh, John, chapter number four. Uh, like many of you, I'm sure, are there with me that we love this chapter. It's such a great chapter of Scripture. I'm not going to read the whole chapter just for sake of time. We'll look at a couple of verses here and then kind of give the context. And you know, I'm sure many of you know about this uh, story. Well, I love this story for, for a few reasons, and we'll, we'll look at it here in just a second. But John chapter 4, verse number 3, says, He left Judea and departed again into Galilee. He must needs go through Samaria. And he comes across uh, Jacob's well here. Look at verse number 7. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. It's a great story of Jesus going out of his way to meet with this woman who wasn't loved by society, who wasn't looked at kindly by those around her. You know, to, uh, to explain a little bit, she's there at this time, you know, kind of not a normal time to go and draw water. She's there alone, and, and that's on purpose. She wasn't there with the normal group of ladies because, again, she had made some mistakes. People of her culture didn't look fondly, you know, on her. Uh, this is a Samaritan woman, and Jesus is a, a Jewish man. You know, she was probably very surprised that he even talked to her, let alone stayed anywhere close to her. Because, you know, culturally, societally, it, it wouldn't have really been acceptable for Jesus, a, a Jewish man, to speak to any Samaritan woman, let alone a woman uh, of her character, of her reputation, of her testimony. But the story doesn't go the way that the Pharisees or the people of the day would have thought it would have gone. Because Jesus, in his loving and compassionate way, disregards the societal and cultural norms. And he just sees a woman who's looking for the truth, who's seeking the truth, and a woman that needs his love, and a, a woman that needs friendship, a woman that needs to, to meet her Savior. You know, he answers a lot of her questions. They kind of have this back and forth where he reveals to her that he knows many details about her life and he knows uh, you know, a lot of the things that's going on that nobody else, you know, could possibly know that didn't, you know, live in her life closely. He just reveals a lot of these things to her. And I want you to look at uh, verse 25. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And what an awesome story. And I, I love it. There's times where you know we as <laughs> as humans we don't know exactly what Jesus' plan was. You know, oftentimes early in his ministry, Jesus was telling people to not proclaim that he was the Messiah and to kind of keep things quiet and whatnot. You know, but with this woman, he tells her, you know, I'm the Messiah. And, and she's obviously looking for the Messiah. She's looking forward to the coming of the Messiah. And Jesus lets her know that that's him. Now Jesus, he, he went out of his way to find a person, to find a woman that was hurting and looking for the truth and seeking answers and was looked down upon by everyone around her. And Jesus let her know that God in heaven loved her and that he, the Messiah, loved her and cared about her. And you know, the rest of the story as the woman would go back to her town and let everybody know about uh, the Messiah, about Jesus, who she had just met, and she wanted to bring a bunch of people to meet Jesus. And it's an awesome story. And we can kind of put ourselves in the woman's shoes. You know, I think about I got saved uh, August 8th, 2008. I was 15 years old, coming up on 16. And Jesus went out of his way to find me. You know, and our, some of our neighbors, uh, the Price family down the road, they ran into my family at, when we were flying kites at a park, and they invited us to a revival. And you know, I had grown up in a Presbyterian church. I had no clue how to be saved. I had no clue what the gospel was or meant. And they invited us to this church, and I went and heard the gospel for the first time. And even though I wasn't living perfect, far from it, even though I thought I was fine, even though I, as far as I knew, you know, I, I was going to heaven. I was baptized as a baby. I was faithful to church. I thought I was fine. But Jesus went out of his way to find me. And there in that seat, we're hearing the gospel. And it took me a few nights of the revival. But finally, on Friday night of that revival, I got saved. You know, and I 
went to that revival for the only reason that I heard that there was going to be dodgeball and pizza after every service. And I just, that was enough to get me going. And the Lord found me. And I heard the gospel and I, I got gloriously saved. And, and my whole family got, you know, just helped and, and, and saved. And just the whole, whole history of my family has been forever changed because of the gospel there, that glorious week of revival, really. And then just on and on, the Lord working on us. And we can, we can put ourselves in her shoes because every single one of us was born sinners. And even our righteousness are as filthy rags. And if you're watching this and you're not saved, I hope that you would get those questions answered today. That again, Jesus is still looking and he's still out trying to seek and to save the lost. And, and if you're watching this and you're not for sure, 100% sure that you're saved on your way to heaven, I want to just tell you the simple truth that your sins separated you from God, separates you from God. But Jesus Christ died on the cross a little over 2,000 years ago and shed his blood to pay the penalty for your sins. And if you'll cry out by faith and accept that free gift of salvation, you'll be eternally and forever saved. And it's just an awesome thing to, even if you are saved, to look back and just rejoice that, like this woman, Jesus found us where we were. And he didn't, didn't just let us move on. He, he sought after us to make sure that we heard the gospel. But another thing about the story that we can learn from and glean from is the fact that there are definitely still people that are seeking. There are people that still have questions. And there are people today, right now, that like this woman, they, they're looking for the truth, but they, they need answers. And I love that Jesus went out of his way to find her and to share the truth with her. And I think we can definitely learn from that. Because I, I know we're not having physical church services but that doesn't mean that the gospel can't go forward. It doesn't mean that we can't learn from Jesus' example and find people where they are and use the tools that we have and go out of our way to share the gospel on Facebook and Instagram and invite people, share some of the services that Brother Hal has preached where he's clearly gone over the gospel and you know to text and to call and to email and to use the tools that we have to share the gospel. You know, just because we're not having physical church doesn't mean the gospel is any different. Uh, just because we can't meet together in a, in a building doesn't mean that the gospel is, isn't still powerful and isn't still life-changing. And I just want to encourage you to, like Jesus did, to go out and find people where they are. And right now, they're on social media. And right now, they're on their phones. And right now, they're still looking for answers. There's still people that need to hear the gospel for the first time, for the tenth time, for the hundredth time. God lets us know his word won't return void, and that certainly still is true today. And I just want to encourage you, if you're not saved, to get saved. But if you are saved, to go out and find people where they are and to use the tools that we have and to share your testimony and share the gospel and, and let people know you're there to answer their questions. We can still be powerful soul winners, and God is still going to bless those efforts, even though we're not having physical church service. I want you to encourage you, if you're not saved, get saved. But if you are saved... Go out and find people where they are. Have the attitude of Jesus where he must needs go through Samaria. And he was seeking out people that, that needed to hear about him. God is still going to bless soul winning efforts. We can still be soul winners even through this crazy time. I want to pray with you real quick. Uh, Lord, I thank you so much for your word. God, I thank you just for how this chapter has been a help to me and been a help to so many. Lord, I'm thankful that you sought me out, and Lord, you've saved me, and I'm so thankful for that. I know many can many can just raise their hand in testimony of the fact that you sought them out, and, and they accepted you, and it was a glorious thing. But Lord, there are still people that need to hear about you. There are still people that we need to tell and share the gospel with. And I pray you'd help us to use the tools that we have now. Lord, bless those efforts, and embolden our faith. Help us to be powerful soul winners, even through this coronavirus. God, that's near. Son that we pray. Amen.